Thank you very much. <clears throat> so uh, I'm Junaid and at the UCF, I am a professor at the finance and computer science departments since 2023, September. I will give a little bit background about uh, my research and through to the AI Institute that hired me, I will even show you some formulas and some AUC plots. So those of you who want to see uh, more computer science related uh, topics, just wait a few seconds. So in teaching, uh, I was before, before coming to UCF this last September, I was in Canada. I was teaching artificial intelligence to fourth year CS undergrads and blockchain data analytics to master students. Here I have been teaching the FinTech capstone course where we welcome CTOs and CEOs of very successful, large successful companies. And we have them present the FinTech ecosystem in, in Florida. And last week, for example, we were in uh, New York City for a college of business trip. And we met lots of people that were talking about moving to Florida. And if you don't know, Citadel, for example, moved to Miami. We have a lot of activity in Florida going forward. In my research, uh, I mainly work in graph machine learning. And you can see the connections to blockchain data analytics because we do graph machine learning on blockchain data. Uh, we look at temporal, topological, and adversarial settings. Topological data analysis is a main line, and topological data analysis is coming from the works of mathematicians. So in a sense, we are doing mathematics and non-parametric statistics in computer science research. We are using graph machine learning for this. Uh, the end product is to have blockchain data analytics and Recently, after, let's say, uh, September, I also started working on security in generative models, large language models such as ChatGPT4 and others that you have been using, I am sure. So this is the formula definition uh, slide. What I want to show you is this. Blockchains such as Bitcoin or Ethereum uh, have price data and you have seen them on websites on blockchain explorers, but they also have this transaction network that is publicly available to us. So in this publicly available network, we have address nodes that I am showing with the circles here and the transaction nodes that I'm showing with rectangles. And based on addresses and their roles in these transaction chains, we can actually uh, extract information about nodes, identities, behaviors and so on. Here I am showing you something that we called chainnets in a 2017 paper that became very influential and cited hundreds of times. This is the fundamental data unit of Bitcoin and other blockchains that we are using. So you will look at these addresses, for example, on the left, I'm showing you a two chainnet and we call it a two chainnet because there are two transactions in it. So in theory, you could extend this to three chainnets, four chainnets and so on. If an address is appearing in a role between transactions one and two, that role tells us something. So for example, if we are looking at the left two chain let we say that the address that is marked with three here, with ID three, uh, is probably an interim address that is used for someone to move money from one address to the other one. So this address itself is quite trivial. It has nothing interesting going on in the transaction network. But there are some addresses and there are some transactions that give us more information. And if you look at these two chainlets, and if you consider where the nodes, the addresses can appear, we count 48 unique roles that an address can take. This work is actually quite revolutionary in a sense that it allows you to uh, do search queries, similarity queries, all these things on the on the Bitcoin blockchain. Last uh, last year, I was presenting this at the Coinbase Machine Learning uh, Summit. And when we look at these specific roles, and I call them orbits, Paul also mentioned some orbits, but our orbits are graph orbits. And if you look at, for example, the most common orbit, uh, you will see that in the top row here, I am showing to you the number of uh, white addresses, these are the addresses that have nothing to do with e-crime, darknet market addresses, or ransomware related addresses. This pattern is very common among ransomware addresses. In fact, if I take the pattern in the first row, 
I find that almost 96% of the addresses with this pattern are identified as ransomware addresses. What is the utility of this? The utility is that most of the companies, when they are ransomed by ransomware, they just pay the ransom without making fuss, without going to the police, without reporting the, the accident to the authorities. So they just silently pay. And if we could identify these undisclosed ransomware payments, we could do something about the hackers. Because if they are not reported, then the police cannot know these addresses that receive ransomware money, and the police cannot do anything about these hackers. So our work is useful in this. And we do this analysis in such a scale that in, Bit in the Bitcoin transaction network, for example, there are around 600,000 daily addresses. So if you do traditional graph machine learning, if you do traditional graph analysis, your methods are not going to scale up to this network. They are not going to work on this. So our utility is that we are able to do this analysis in a quite scalable way. And in these slides, I am showing you our orbits work, which is a, uh, how to say, is it's a quite intuitive work because it considers addresses in chain nets and their roles is combinatorial. So it's easier to understand. We also develop graph neural networks. We also develop topological data analysis methods. Orbits is also a topological method. But what I mean is that we develop more complex methods for other problems as well. And here is my AUC plot. And this plot basically shows you that our models work with great efficiency. On the left plot, I'm showing you the classification when we use only a limited around 500,000 byte addresses. On the right, we am showing you when we increase the scale. And the plots show that the AUC, this is the area under the curve for the precision recall, is quite good. So our methods are working quite nicely. So what is the use in this? Uh, we can do similarity queries the police can say, give me addresses that look similar to this address from yesterday's data. We can find all the addresses from yesterday that have the same identical behavior. And we are doing this analysis on a huge network of more than 10,000 days. And each day you have more than 600,000 addresses. So this graph is, is quite large. And we can do this analysis in, in something like five minutes. We can find all the addresses involved in some behavior that you define. For example, the police can say, here is the ransomware behavior that we are searching for. Find all the addresses in this row. We do this analysis for darknet market payments. We do this analysis for undisclosed ransomware payments. We also use them in supervised learning and visualization. So we are looking for actually novel ways to utilize orbits. One problem with the Bitcoin data is that the data is so big if you go to a blockchain explorer on the internet, for example, they will show you only a portion of the data. They will show one address and its immediate transactions, but they will never show you the full address. By using the orbits, we can show this full address. And we have also used orbits in uh, volatility analysis, in finance uh, journals. We published articles even before I came here. We use the orbits for clustering and so on. So, this brings me to this discussion. What we are doing, we are doing uh, basically mathematical work in computer science through graph machine learning. We use non-parametric statistical tools like data depth or topological data analysis. Recently, I also started working in two things. The first one is security in LLMs, but the other one is also we are looking at graph machine learning for drug discovery. So. Being a finance professor, that would be a very interesting thing. But also remember, I'm a computer science professor as well. The main, my main point in this presentation was this. We do this graph machine learning, this graph analysis of blockchains. And actually, we are primed. I see myself as the first professor of decentralized finance. I have a PhD in computer science. I am seated in the finance department. I was hired through the AI initiative. So people like me will be very common because blockchains will command more and more money. Right now, there are billions of dollars in blockchains. If you are familiar with the news, Bitcoin ETF was approved and it reached $10 billion in the shortest time possible uh, that existed. So uh, it, it rushed to the $10 billion sooner than any other ETF. Blockchains are here. 
more and more money will come to blockchains. We need analysis tools. We need blockchain intelligence tools. Right now, we have blockchain data analytics companies that are mainly focused on e-crime. So they want to tell you, don't touch this transaction. Don't receive coins from this transaction. Why? Because the government is saying you should not abet money laundering. So these analytics tools are hired by banks and other companies to identify which coins they should not touch. But in the future, we will see blockchain intelligence. So my blockchain plan is this. We need to implement tools that can analyze and audit smart contracts on Bitcoin and Ethereum for security vulnerabilities, performance, and efficiency. Some form of this already exists, but it is, it is limited to a computer, like software development research area. They are not really doing blockchain data analytics by using this. We need a comprehensive DeFi analytics dashboard. So we need to have DeFi platforms on Ethereum, for example, and we need to identify hacks, anomalies in real time. For example, in a recent research article, uh, we looked at the Luna Terra collapse of last year they, that wiped out billions of dollars. And we found that we could early identify it. Why didn't anyone identify it? Because they were not looking at this data in real time. We can monitor and report on the health and performance of Bitcoin and Ethereum networks including transaction throughput, gas fees, block times, network congestion, all of these things. Furthermore, I know you don't want to hear about NFTs because they are kind of, uh, they were used to by people to, to, to steal money from, uh, from uh, investors and so on, but we will have this digitization of real world assets. Not quite your house, but maybe your car or other services. And non-fungible tokens on Ethereum will be used to track, and we can use this data to track sales trends, hot collections, market sentiment, and so on. Eventually, starting with next year, let's say, I have been here for six, seven months, and I am applying to grants and trying to create my own group. But in a year of or something, I should have enough time to dedicate myself to creating a data analytics blockchain intelligence platform that is similar to Bloomberg data services. And you know how much Bloomberg earns through these data services. I was in their office last week with the College of Business. I believe that we can do something similar for blockchain. We need investments, we need engineers working on it, but we can definitely do it. So if you are looking for collaborators in that space, please reach out to me. Thank you very much for the opportunity.